Hi everyone. Uh, if you have been uh, writing publications or you are planning to write a publication uh, along with other authors or other researchers, then uh, you need to be very clear about the importance of uh, being the first author or not. Uh, so the first author is of course the, uh, the lead author of the paper and uh, the sequence of authorship is decided by the size of contribution in the paper. So just because someone is more senior to you or more experienced to you or more knowledgeable to you doesn't mean they become the first author if they have not contributed as they should as the fourth author. So if you are a student but you have written majority of the paper and then you invite uh, some senior uh, supervisors or some senior academics or senior staff members uh, doesn't mean that you cannot be the lead author just because you probably don't have a background of publications or you have not published before or you are new or you are a student. Uh, so if you have written majority of the paper, then you are you deserve to be the first author. However, when you begin any publication or you begin work on any project, it should be very clear as to who will be the first author and what are the expectations from the co-authors or how will they be uh, appearing in the sequence of authorship who will be the second third fourth so on and so forth some people write papers with 10 15 20 people as well that's fine but the contribution of each or the role of each and the sequence in which their names appear uh, should be very clear before the paper goes in for a review or final publication what is the importance of it so most of the academics will tell you that it is very important to be the first author of a paper uh, yes and no so especially if you are doing your phd by publications and you are the student and you are working with your supervisors ideally you should be the first author in all your publications uh, sometimes uh, your co-author or supervisor may have made a sizable contribution making them the first author in a paper it's accepted by some universities and then some universities uh, frown on it or they don't like it and they will not allow it to be submitted as part of your uh, phd publication uh, i mean if it is being part of the thesis so if you are a phd student and you're working with your supervisors try to be the first author uh, in all your publications uh, talk to your supervisors make sure they are very clear about it as well and how you should be writing the paper what kind of contribution should you be making so that you are the lead author and that is the importance of it if you are already completed your phd and you are writing your publications uh, then of course uh, uh, many academics want to be the first author because in un some universities uh, first author is what they look at when they are considering your research output uh, which is then helpful for your academic promotions so they only look at papers where you have been the first author they don't look at papers where you have been the second or the third or the fourth author even though they might be uh, 20 or 30 of them some universities um, uh, some universities uh, they don't care they only look at the total research output they only look at the total number of publications uh, how does it come across in the journal now in the journal sometimes you have to be very clear when you're submitting to a journal or a conference you make it very clear to them as to how you want the authorship details to appear because sometimes you may be the lead author the others may have agreed but when you submit it to a journal and you submit it to a conference and they make a mistake or they are not aware of your requirements and they may change the sequence of authorship on their own uh, some journals they uh, in some in some journals the names appear as in alphabetical order uh, and uh, the lead author may sometimes come across as the uh, last author if it is alphabetically or somewhere in the middle in those regards the journal should be very clear on how to identify the lead author and you should also make it very clear to the journal as to how you want to be identified as the lead author whether they because their formatting requirements they could have it in the alphabetical order um, but uh, it should be very clear uh, if someone looks at the journal they should know who exactly is the lead author um, uh, some journals of course they will uh, write uh, the I mean they will mention the authorship in the order in which you want it to appear and similar is the case with conference papers as well um, like I said uh, it depends on the requirement of your university 
if it's an essential requirement uh, to be uh, the first author of uh, papers for your academic promotions then uh, make sure that uh, those are the kind of academic uh, contributions you make to the paper uh, do not be unethical in these regard because just to be the first author do not be unethical because then people will uh, not like to work with you people if they find that you are unethical if you really want to be the first author then you should write the paper you should lead the paper you should make um, uh, the contribution which will make you the lead author however if your university is only looking at your overall research output uh, don't worry so much about being the lead author but focus more on producing the research publications being part of research projects um, and add to your research profile which will help you in future thank you for watching today's video and i'll see you soon with my next video bye for now